Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Now, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, there's another scripture that says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How can you have faith to grow in holiness if nobody's teaching you that you need to live a holy life? How can you know what a holy life is if you never hear the scriptures that tell you what holiness is? When you are, when someone shares the word with you, they're not sharing it because they want to hear themselves talk. They're sharing it with you because you are rebuilding a whole new life. You, you start with a new foundation. You, you dug up and, and excavated everything. And now you're, you're leveling out and softening up the soil. And you're preparing yourself with tenderness so that you can absorb what God is giving you instead of it rolling off your back like water off of a duck's back. You are tenderizing yourself and then you lay the foundation, okay? And then the foundation is what? Jesus Christ. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the beginning of your building. All right. Now, as you're building, you need teachers. You need counselors. You need instructors. You need people that will put you in check when you get side when you sidestep so that's what I mean when I say if you really 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 want to be all that God wants you to be you have to have an ear to hear because if you don't want to hear it you won't receive it if you don't receive it you won't believe it and if you don't believe it you won't be it you will turn into your own version of what you want your Christianity to be. But your version doesn't count compared to God's. All right, now I'm going to show you what I mean about correction. I'm going to go right now to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to deal with the works of the flesh. Now, a lot of us don't know what the works of the flesh are if we have not read this chapter. But this compares the works of the flesh, that's us in our old sinful ways, mm -hmm, to the works of the Spirit. Now, I'm going to read it to you as soon as I get to you. Okay. Here we go. All right. I love this. Starting at verse 14. And I'll just keep reading. All right. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. In other words, take heed that you don't consume each other, that you don't get all caught up in nonsense and pull each other down. All right. This I say then, verse 16, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the the flesh and these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would now here's an example lord help me with this 
I had a friend years ago, he was a taxi driver, phenomenal actor. I'm going to make this as quick as possible because I got more to go because I want you to see the, con the contrast, the, the flesh and spirit. Okay, this guy, phenomenal. I mean, at the level of James Earl Jones, at the level of Morgan Freeman, of, uh, of uh, Denzel Washington, Sean Connery. Um, oh, what's the other guy that I love somebody? Even uh, Carol O'Connell. Oh, that man was a phenomenal actor. So you look at these natural abilities to act. I mean, classic. Now, this man did plays at a church and a community, community theater group. My friend and I went to watch him. And as we sat and watched him, I was leaning over, whispering to her, girl, this man, he should be on TV. What is he doing down here in the basement? Symbolisms now. Listen for the symbolisms. What is this giant doing down in a basement with this gift? All right. As the play went on, I marveled at his acting ability. Now, I'm going to share with you about what the Bible means when it says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Let me add a, uh, a, a 2017 spin to that. You can't do the things that you would if you could. But you can't, so you ain't. Now, excuse me, hot air again. This man showed me a movie he was in back in the I Spy era. You know, you remember uh, Superfly and all of that, where they had the long sideburns. He was in a movie, and he was in a fighting scene in an elevator. And I remember seeing him, and I'm thinking, what sabotaged his ability? to hit the top of the charts in the acting arena. And as I got to know him better, we would hang out, go get stuff to eat. He was my running buddy. I had to tell him one time, I said, you know what, for a person who is as nice as you are, you have a very ugly side. You, are, you can be difficult when you want to be. And, you know, he, he needed me to explain it because he could not see it in himself. Then he turned it back at me like, okay, so you think you know it all or whatever. I just left it alone. We ate. We had a good time. And that was it. But what I noticed was I would listen to the way he would talk to his friend who was a fellow taxi cab driver. And... He would say things in a blunt way, like if he was talking to a couple of people and the taxi driver th thought his friend thought he was talking to him, he would, instead of saying, oh, yeah, I was just, yeah, uh, you know, play it all. He would say something like, I wasn't talking to you. Anyway, blah, blah. And he, he didn't think that was rude. He had no social skills. So... What I learned from watching him interact with people, if a server made him mad, he would cuss and, 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 and put him down and just say he was crude, he was rude, he was, he was crass. Whew, okay, total, I mean, no, no diplomacy whatsoever. I mean, just totally void of it. Social graces down the toilet. That's when it hit me. This is why you have not made it to the top. There's an expression we use nowadays that says, your attitude determines your altitude. So this guy had the sourest attitude. Nice guy, meant well, but he just jacked up everything. He sabotaged himself. He sabotaged his own success because of his attitude and his lack of control, lack of control, lack of it. All right. Now, 
I want you to hear, because see, we don't realize in life how things we say, things we do. I mean, I get people tell me all the time I offended them or, or I joke too much or whatever. And I have to curtail that because I'm playful, I'm affectionate, and I still have to watch how I say things. And the more confident, more confidence I get from God's healing, now I need more wisdom to go with it or else I'll do damage. So we all have to be willing to keep ourselves in check and not be offended because somebody corrects us. Take the truth and say, Lord, help me there. All right, now listen, this is, this is what the word says about the flesh. I hope you're learning from this because if we really want to grow, we got to learn. All right, <clears throat> and if we really want to go, we got to learn how to get there. All right. Verse 7, no, let's see. Yeah, verse 17. I already read it, but I'm repeating it. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are these. Excuse me. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Listen. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Contrast. But the fruit of the Spirit, fruit, you must bear fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Temperance is another word for self-control. Against such, there is no law. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So those of us who are in Christ Jesus, we have nailed all that stuff of the flesh to the cross. Mm -hmm. We've crucified it. If we live in the spirit, verse 25, let us also walk in the spirit. And let me add today's version. Let us talk in the spirit. All right. 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now, when your life, I know there's a thing that I see a lot of on youtube i see a lot of it on facebook i see it in churches and it's a word that we hear a lot of nowadays narcissism narcissism is about me what did you say to me how is this going to benefit me what do i get out of it it's about me myself and i now, if we can't benefit me, and you can't benefit me, and you can't be about me, then I have no time for you. If you can't do it my way, if you can't march to my tune, if you can't be under my control, then baby, let her roll. So we have to, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. Vain glory. That's the flesh. So all of these things are in us. But we don't have to allow them the thrones in our lives. Dethrone those bad boys. I'm steadily doing it to me. And if I need to do it, and you're only two years, three years in the Lord, guess what? Mm, anyway. All right. So that is your lesson for the night. 
as far as growth, bearing fruit, knowing the difference between the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God bless you. Amen. Oh, and happy 4th of July. Don't eat too much. <laughs>